He found a way to kill me yet. Eyes above with stinging sweat. Seems each path leads me to nowhere. safe bed bullet scream me if this somewhere <laughs> ah, here comes a rooster here comes yeah Tonight on Bear Friends Tea Party, uh, we've got a uh, show full of good fucking shit. Um, segment one, um, I'll be talking to you about uh, giant chewy sweet toads. Segment two, uh, Daniel Gunnard Beamish will be uh, hosting a, 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 a Snot and Tears, Stan Freeberg, 1926 to 2015. Segment three, inappropriate things to do with those pneumatic tubes they have at banks. And segment four, who said that? <laughs> Katie, can you say Bear Friend Tea Party into the mic? Bear Friend Tea Party? Yeah, it's like, it's the name of our podcast. We're going to use it on the podcast. Do I, is it recording now? Uh, okay, so, okay, I guess we should... Well, before we get into uh, segment one, let's uh, take a moment to reach into the Bear Friend Tea Party mailbag. Um, we do have, uh, this week I'd like to, uh, touch on a couple of iTunes reviews we have. Oh. Um. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, uh, recently, uh, received a review from, uh, the Adam Sandcast left us a review, uh, the title of which is, I have no idea who this band is, <laughs> and based on this podcast, I don't care to find out. <laughs> And then they uh, left the review, Why would anyone in their right mind listen to this trash? Jesus, doesn't anyone have integrity anymore? <laughs> Fair friend, tea party. High praise. Well, you know, sometimes you just gotta call a spade a spade. Like, but not in a racist way. And, uh, interestingly enough, they did still give us five stars. <laughs> <laughs> So hats off to the, what, the Adam Sandler cast? Is that what the Adam called? Sand cast. Actually, I, I reviewed their <laughs> podcast as well. They, it's, a, it's a podcast about uh, where they talk about Adam Sandler movies. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but I left them a nice review. <laughs> and, and, here, and, and it's time to introduce our special guest, Adam <laughs> from the Adam <laughs> <laughs> Why do you leave such a meme review, Adam? The Adam Sandcast. Fuck you, by the way. So they are our rivals now. And by the way, if, if any of our listeners would like to check out the Adam Sandcast, you'll find the link in the show notes description. Bear friend tea party. We got a uh, we got another good review from uh, Beep Bep. Um, what? Huh? Beep Bep. Oh, I'm sorry. The the uh, the the title of the review was Beep Bep. That makes some more sense. The review said says the iTunes equivalent of a numbers station. Oh, yeah. <laughs> makes me want to dunk a basketball in slow motion. No, hold on a minute. That no. that had to be one of us. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
What what's what is a number station? It's one of those radio stations where they just read numbers. Three. No, nine, that, that's really seven, what it is. One, yeah, they're radio five, stations. They're they're often like uh, three, shortwave nine, stations, like seven, long distance, one, where it's just somebody five, reading numbers, and it's three, it's not a uh, it's seven, not clear what they're for. One, and it's not clear five, where, what their origin is, and there's three, all kinds of hypotheses nine, around them. Like yeah, they could be one, espionage five, related. Well, do the, or, do the numbers three, really have an origin, nine, or are they seven, you know one, transcendental? Five, yeah, I mean, are there is there what? such a thing as numbers, really? Ninety-nine. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite number station. They just say ninety-nine. Ninety-nine. <laughs> Some of them also, they, they'll rec- it will be a robot voice rec- reciting a string of numbers yeah. that appears to have no meaning to anything, and then it will play a little melody, and oh, then it really? will recite recite know. the same numbers over and over. Ninety-nine. 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 Um, yeah. Bear friend tea party. Um, <laughs> well, now that this is dead ended. Bear friend tea party. Um, okay, I have a correction. I actually have uh, I have two corrections for uh, in episode zero 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 two zero, the Jefferson Abacus. Um, in our in our lengthy discussion of the Chronic. Um, I uh, I made reference to Easy E, and I referred to him as Sir Easy E, <laughs> and we 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 joked about the fact that he uh, had been knighted, which um, obviously that was not true. I'm not going to correct that, but <laughs> I should have called him. Wait, <laughs> I mean that that was obviously a joke. That was obviously a joke. It doesn't need to be corrected. Wait, is that actually a that joke? He was not knighted. Sir <laughs> Easy E was not knighted. Obviously. No, he's not even a subject of the queen. He can't become a knight. I feel like if the queen wanted to knight, if the queen sit like woke up one morning and like said like I'm gonna knight Easy E, I bet like <laughs> she could fucking do it. But it's not traditional. In any case, the correction I wanted to make. I really should have said Sir Easy of E. Fair <laughs> friend tea party. Be scary, right? Also on episode 00020, the Jefferson Abacus, um, in our discussion of whether or not the Constitution was bullshit, I, uh, I made the claim that uh, later proved to be erroneous that... Uh, I, I, I made the claim that... Thomas Jefferson had intended for the Constitution to include sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it, that was not true. I, I, I certainly did not mean to demean our founding fathers when I said that. I misspoke. I had meant to say that Jefferson liked to fuck his slaves. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, your point came through. <laughs> okay. Fair friend tea party. <laughs> oh man. Walking tall machine gun man. And I'm playing a single thing. Oh God, please help me make it through. Yeah. yeah. Come to have a rooster. Wake him up. Said, wake him up. Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna get waked up by the rooster. Yeah. That didn't work. All right, should we cut that? Segment one. Giant chewy sweet tarts. Segment one. Giant chewy sweet tarts. Yeah. Um. Okay, guys, so I really like giant chewy sweet tarts. No shit. Hold on. Hold on. I, I don't agree to that. No, 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 no. I, no, it's true. He does. I don't agree. I don't, I don't take him at his word necessarily. Yeah, do you want to show some evidence or what? <laughs> yeah, I, this is not... Is this a falsifiable <laughs> the, the burden claim? burden of proof is on the person making the claim, right? So if you claim that you like big chewy sweet tarts... Hey, then John, you... prove he doesn't. Prove he doesn't <laughs> like giant chewy sweet tarts. Fallacy! <laughs> well, I just happen to have some giant chewy sweet tarts. I don't know. Oh, shit, it just knocked a bunch of hot dogs under the floor. I just, I'd <laughs> like to hear your argument in the form of a formal syllogism. Please. That goes over my head. I can... Premise one. 
I like giant chewy sweet tarts. No, no, I think uh, I think to to formalize it, you have to say um, there exists an X such that X equals Jeremy and X likes giant chewy sweet tarts. I understand. We all we all agree that. I exist, right? <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, that I think we have a <laughs> caller on the line. You have to, you have to, you have to build in some assumptions to your, your base argument, right? I mean, you can't. No, we have enough. We okay, have a can caller we, on the line. No, no. Let's. I mean, you know what? I'm just going to go with it. We can't really solve hard solipsism, right? Yeah, let's. No, let's. We, we have to assume. Let's, let's just. That the reality. Yeah, John, let's. Okay. Is, you're right. You know, you know let's right. take let it as a working hypothesis. Otherwise, what's the point? Let's. Let, Hello, John, caller. John. Hello, Agreed. caller. Agreed. Well, let's caller, take it as a working line. hypothesis yeah, that yeah, Jeremy exists. We have a caller on the line who can solve hard solids. Hello. <laughs> I'd like to. Uh, can we? You know what? I have a procedural issue. Can we stop for a second? I guess. I think, and this is. We've really brought up an issue. Like I think, before any of us starts our our segments, we should state the assumptions that we'd like to, like everyone to just accept for the sake of argument before we move into that segment. So let's back up. Segment one is mine. Segment one is giant chewy sweet tarts. Before we get into that, I'd like to, I'd like to assert that. Number one, there exists me. And number two, that there exists giant chewy sweet tarts. That's an awfully big assumption. And now I'd like to begin my big. segment. No, no, Jeremy, uh, can, can I just no, jump no, in there? But, 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 no, no. No, Those no, no. But just, 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 that can, are no, but no, we, no, no, I just, no. I want to know but about you. Jeremy, 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 one question for you. One question for you. How do you know? Can I assume? How do you know that? No, no, no. It's an assumption. How do you know that? It's an assumption. But how do you it, know? It's an assumption. We, Jeremy, Jeremy, just for the purposes of the segment, should I also assume that regular sweet tarts exist? That is, that is not assumed. Um, okay, okay. I just look, needed now, to know if that was an assumption the, or not. Y- y- they do, but... <laughs> <laughs> but if you'd like to take the... Very unlikely contrary position. I guess you're welcome to. Uh, so, no, look, and here's how this works from now on. For, moving forward, you can accept these assumptions and participate in the segment, or you can reject them and sit this one out. Okay, Jeremy. Now, yes, Danny. Um, sweet tarts are, are okay. I kind of like them. Hey, wait, can I ask you, uh, have we started, are we, is this part of the segment or is this, this still? This is all part of this, as far as I'm concerned. Are you Are you trying to consider whether or not you want to take part in the segment? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, have, I actually have opinions on sweet tarts. Okay, one segment podcast. one. <laughs> segment one. Giant chewy sweet tarts. So guys, I really like giant chewy sweet tarts and I would really like to hear what you guys think about my opinions on that, and I would like to hear your opinions on giant chewy sweet tarts as well. Okay, sweet Go. tarts. Those are like the Valentine candy, right? They say like be mine and shit no, like that. no, no, no. Those are no. sweet hearts. Shit. These are sweet tarts. I'm not. I'm not joking. I literally don't know what you're talking about. Uh, sweet, sweet tarts. tarts. They're, they're smooth. They're circular. They're smooth on the outside. They kind of when you first pop them in your mouth, they have they sort of. Have the glossy consistency, like runts almost. Yep. Like so, they start out. They start out smooth, and then they get kind of a, a texture as you, as you yeah. like suck through them. The conceit is that they are both sweet and tart. Right. I was thinking of Smarties there for a minute, which I'm angry about. <laughs> Very similar to Smarties. I would say that Smarties are probably knockoff sweet tarts that are a little more powdery. Runts, it should be oh, said. Gosh. Smarties means different things in different countries. Yeah, Runts. that's why I was confused, but I, I'm cool. I'm cool. We don't want to confuse our international listeners. Yeah, international listeners, when you're thinking of Smarties, you're thinking of something else. Yeah, international listeners, just, just sit on your hands and shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> just sit this one out. Point I was making. Go on. Runts, it should be said. Well, they are similar to sweet tarts. Have a, they do they have a glossy finish. Yeah. And sweet tarts have a more matte finish. 
Agreed. Mm. No. Okay. Sweet tarts have a glossy finish, and then when you, you suck on them for a few seconds. Yeah, they, they develop then... a texture. Are you thinking of shock tarts? Three. No, I'm not thinking of shock tarts. You're like... thinking of three. I, wait, I am thinking of something else, right? though. Come on. So they start out really smooth, but as you're sucking on it, 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 it develops pits and pores, right? Kind of a gravelly texture. Kind of a gravelly, yeah, yeah. I mean, it becomes a different thing. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, sweet. Yeah, that's right. Sweet tarts definitely become gravelly. So this, but this, but 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 it's it, it's interesting because like as you suck it, right, the smaller it gets, the like bigger the surface area gets because of you know fractal geometry. It's like the coast of Maryland. You know that actually is interesting, right? I was going to object that it wasn't interesting, and then you hit me with the the part at the end, and that is interesting. Fractals are always interesting. Fractals are badass. Yeah, it's true. Sweet sweet tarts, they're bigger on the inside than they are on the outside. So you're saying that, like, as as you suck a sweet tart, the surface area becomes infinite. What? Yeah, it becomes infinite. <laughs> it approaches <laughs> infinity. Yeah, if you if you suck one all the way down, uh, a black hole forms. Well, at the very least, it, a, a neutron star. That's probably why shock tarts are so <laughs> sour. Because because they're. Their outside is infinite. Yeah. Um, this conversation has become strange. Podcast.com. In any case, the point I wanted to make was not about sweet tarts regular, but about uh, giant chewy sweet tarts, which are great. The normal are those sweet like, tarts. Are those like uh, uh, giant pretzels? No. Pretzels? Giant they're like chewy, sweet no, charts, but they're no. giant and chewy, John. Yeah, they so like wait, giant, are there like giant... Like pretzels are to pretzels, right? Oh, okay, I see what you mean. Are there... Yeah. But are, it's, yes. it's an analogy, right? You know, it's so an like analogy. It makes a lot of sense. Is, ah, is, you know, so there yeah. are no regular size okay, chewy pretzels. Yeah, but with, with, one, with one exception, Are John, there regular one, size uh, chewy sweet Hold on, hold on. Do you mean exception or do you mean caveat? One caveat, thank you. One difference between regular pretzels and giant chewy pretzels is that you often dip them into cheese or whatever. Uh, you don't dip giant chewy sweet tarts into anything. <laughs> you don't, perhaps. I really did not think we would spend so much time defining giant chewy sweet tarts. Yeah, they, they are literally already defined. What, what else, just, what else just, do you want to say about giant really chewy sweet and I was, tarts, I, you know, I, I think there's a few things about giant chewy sweet tarts that I really like. They're one of the few um, giant versions of an existing thing that is actually better than the original. In now, why opinion. is that? Why is that? Because they're chewy. But don't they make regular sweet tarts that are chewy? They may, but I don't know about them. But they're not as big. So you like you you would say that giant chewy sweet tarts are proportionally better to regular chewy sweet tarts than say big cheese it is to conventional cheese. Hold on, but big cheese its are not are not substantially different in quality than they're not chewy. Well, that, I'm trying to get that's what I'm trying to gauge is the quality of them. They're just yeah, they're just I think bigger. that I mean the the quality is is the same, right? Yeah, imagine if they were big and chewy. But that's why I said I'm comparing yeah, giant chewy instance. sweet tarts to regular sized chewy sweet tarts. Yeah, so, I, honestly, I cannot think of another example. Please. I'm, Jeremy, I'm, I'm, there's something I'm not sure about here. Uh, you said you think this is one of the only situations where the giant version is better. But I kind of feel like you could put giant chewy in front of virtually anything and it would become awesome. Give me a real world example. American Constitution, giant chewy American Constitution. I said a real world example. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> but surely you agree that if they made a giant chewy constitution, it would be superior to the original. Because I... the original's bullshit. Well, I don't know, except that once you eat the chewy constitution, you know. It's gone. No, you can't right? eat it. You can't eat it. You just chew on it. Huh? It's not edible. It's just chewy. Oh. Okay. So it's like it, it's it, like it, a it, big so... constitution. Like it's like made out of rubber. Because <laughs> like giant, giant, the giant chewy sweet tarts. They're kind of like if you like crushed up a bunch of sweet tarts and then like mixed them with gum or something. Yeah. They're like kind of oh, hard man. at first, and you're like, I thought these were supposed to be chewy. 
Is it? They're they bad eggs. Are they I've stale had, or something? That but then is they nice. like, you have to I do like, like it. I like it when stuff starts you out hard like and, really and then gets to them. It's like, yeah, yeah it's, it's, that's good. Spree! Really good. I'm thinking of Spree! I told you so. Spree! Spree! Spree oh, I you said is what you were talking about. I thought you said Spree! That's the candy that's sort of like, like glossy like runts and then oh. gets chewy. Yeah. Spree! Yeah. No shit. Yeah, those are good. Look, to be honest, I think I've been thinking of Spree this whole time. No. John, initially you were thinking of sweet parts. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. They're made by That's the Necco company. Was thinking of they're, the same fuck, they're the same as Necco wafers. Like, they're made for uh, like, they're like, they're like, they're like, they're like, they're like, they're really like, yeah, they're, they're made of this. So, you know, so, so, so in any case, I really like giant chewy sweet tarts and like, I, I, Oh, okay. Well, geez, Jeremy, well, I'm going to have to try them. So, let's move on. Yeah! Here come the roads. Okay, so this is my segment, and, um... Is this, like, a serious segment? <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I mean, Go it's on. not serious, and it's about a, uh, you know, it's about a comedian, so it doesn't have to be that serious. Um, I just, I heard, uh, last week, was it maybe? It was over two years ago. Uh, I was on the internet. No shit. <laughs> And I saw that Stan Freeberg had died, and my, and and I was I, I was really hit emotionally by it because I I didn't know that he was still alive, but <laughs> <laughs> and that's true. It like hurts even more. It just it, it got me. It was like oh he was still alive. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. And if you had asked me, I would have guessed that he was dead. Right. <laughs> All I knew is that he was really famous a very long time ago, like when shit was in black and white. And when, like, on the radio, my grandparents were collecting records and stuff. Stan Freeberg, August 7th, 1926 to April 7th, 2015, was an American author, recording artist, voice actor, comedian, radio personality, puppeteer, and advertising creative director, whose career began in 1944. He remained active in the industry into his late 80s, more than 70 years after entering it. Freeberg died on April 7, 2015, aged 88, at UCLA Medical Center, Santa Monica, California, from pneumonia. I liked Stan Freeberg. He had that old man river routine where like, it was even before they even had such a thing as political correctness, I guess, but it was basically a politically correctness guy and he was like, oh, well, well, you know, uh, our, uh, some of our older listeners reject uh, reject the term old, they prefer to be called elderly, whatever. Elderly, I, yeah. I don't know, I don't know, some fucking shit. But it's basically that some guy's like, keeps interrupting this song, and like, you know, fucking, thus, it becomes humorous. Yeah. Right? I like Stan Freeberg though, I feel like he was, uh, pretty, he's like one of those guys that was like, really influential, despite like, being like, fairly unknown at this point. Okay, I had a tape of Stan Freeberg at one point. Did you really? Yeah, I listened to it a lot actually. It was it was pretty funny. Some of, some of it was a little dated. What was on it? Was it like a like a, a recording of one of his albums or was it a I don't know, it was, it was probably like a best of thing. It had the elderly man river thing. It didn't have the uh, banana boat song. Uh, the Stan Freeberg's classic Deo banana boat routine. Yeah. You know, when we were younger, we all used to listen to it. And at the time, it seemed like the guy who was singing Deo was the funny the one. The wacky guy. And then it's it's only like years and years later, you realized it was actually the quiet uh, beatnik guy who was the funny one. Oh, uh, two piercings. They're both kind of funny. They're both, they're, yeah, I mean, they're, they're both they're, funny. They're both yeah. No, 
as you got like even, you, you thought as the beatnik when you was became the straight man. even older, you realized that they Neither were both equally were funny. funny, and that it was the comic <laughs> interplay between them. So, Danny, what do you have? To, do you have anything to say about Stan Freeberg, Danny? I already, I pretty much said it. Snuff the rooster. Whoa. Okay, segment three. Segment three. In a appropriate thing to do with those zoomatic tubes they have at banks. Oh, this is John. my segment. Yeah, this is you, baby. So, I thought I thought maybe that uh, my hope for this segment um, was that it would be, you know, kind of along the same lines as our uh, sneaking out of a hospital's cliches. Okay, so maybe we'll just start with, with my list that I prepared. 20 minutes ahead of time, and then we could just riff. We could just riff from there. Wait, oh, wait. I wait. didn't know you had a list. Wait, John's always wait. had a lisp. Wait, hold on. Go ahead. Hey, did you guys know that the that the term pneumatic? Um, Go on. Go on. <laughs> did you know that the uh, that it can refer to a uh, it, it can mean like if if you call a woman pneumatic, it can mean it can refer to a woman with with large breasts. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. It makes <laughs> sense. I mean, I can't really. Um, I can't. Yeah, you know. Really tell you why, Yeah. I I I looked it up today Perfect. and I didn't. I hadn't known that. And I was it's cause, like, what? It's because breasts are made of pneumats, right? <laughs> Well, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, oh, come on, <laughs> it makes total sense. But it makes a lot of sense. Uh, if you if you read, you know, a lot of uh, some women some women have more than others. Edwardian farce, like the you know the uh, stuff by P. G. P. G. Woodhouse and things like that. They occasionally will refer to a new map. Sorry, you mean you mean P. J. Woodhouse? No, P. J. Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> That's who I meant, PJ Harvey. People Thank keep telling. So, so John, this is your segment. Okay, so uh, do you want to do? I'm this just gonna read thing? my list. Okay, it's sort of rapid fire, and you guys can sort of react to it. <clears throat> okay, okay, so the following is a list of inappropriate things to do with the pneumatic tube that they have at the bank. Mm -hmm. Have sex with it. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was the only one I had. <laughs> Wait, what is the... No, shut up, shut up, stop. No, 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 no. These ducks are great. They never get to finish the act. They never get to finish the act. Okay. Uh, some inappropriate things that you can do with the pneumatic tubes that they have at the bank. Have sex with it. <laughs> fill it. Fill it with jellyfish. Yeah. Yeah, no. Pretend it's a time machine. <laughs> Pretend it's a telephone. <laughs> Hello? Send candy back into the bank. <laughs> Bring your hamster so it can use it as a terrarium. <laughs> Send coded messages through it. Yeah. Use it to kill a guy in an action movie. <laughs> then make a one-liner like that doesn't see make that. any sense. For example... Too bad. Bullshit. <laughs> or, or get tubed. Come on, don't bullshit me. What, a, what uh, about tubular? I'm a cop, you idiot! Yeah, tubular would work. Okay, I just have a couple more. Okay, fill it with liquid chocolate. <laughs> fill it with liquid gold. And then the last one is just physics experiment. <laughs> <laughs> That's as far as I got. You left out poop in it. <laughs> That's all I that's all I thought. Well, that could be included in the sex one.
<laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> the only one I had was have sex with it. That was that was my list. <laughs> that was your only one. <laughs> but we could probably riff right now. Let, I bet I bet we could come up with some. What more. if you no? What about this? What if you like founded a bank inside it? What? Inside the tube itself? It would be. They would be so confused. What? Okay, okay, okay. I've I've got one. It would be inappropriate to. It would be inappropriate to shrink yourself down to about like two inches tall, and get on some kind of mini spacecraft and go inside it, and then pretend that you've shrunk yourself down much further and you're inside someone's body. Uh-huh. I understand. It'd be inappropriate. What if you like you just like pull up at the bank? And like they send the tube thing over because you press the button, and then you just like, you just like take the capsule out and try to stick your arm up there, <laughs> <laughs> and then you just like, just like yelling oh, at them. Yeah. Or if you know, like, what if instead of your arm, it was your penis? They're friends. Like really confused, and you're like yelling at them, like, all right, what? Okay. I'd like to make a deposit, and you're like sticking your arm up there. Okay. You pull up at the bank. You pull up. I think that would be inappropriate. That'd be good. That'd be inappropriate. You pull up at the bank. They shoot the tube at you, and you send back a. You write a little message on paper and send it back through the tube, and the message just says. What is this? Some kind of pneumatic tube? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, what if you, you you show you drive up to the bank and they they send the the pneumatic tube over and you, and then like uh, okay, they they they're like they're like, "Oh, do you have a deposit?" and you're like, "Yeah." <laughs> and then and then they're like, "All right, I'll send the capsule." So they send the capsule and then you put something in it. They they take it back. They like take the capsule back, they open it up, it's a naked picture of their wife. <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 a swarm of angry bees. Hey, how do you get the swarm in there? What about a swarm of torporous bees? <laughs> what about a, a swarm of friendly bees? Would that be okay? I mean, by the time they get to the other end of the tube, they're gonna be angry. Then when they see when they say like why did you put a swarm of angry bees through the pneumatic tube you can just say I don't know they were friendly when I put them in there. <laughs> okay guys, what about what if you just like what if you just poured a bunch of water into it, just like a lot of a lot of water. Yeah. That one's not very funny. Okay. No the the the. the... Category the category is not funny things to do with pneumatic too. <laughs> yeah, no, it, preferably preferably it should not. What if be you funny. put like what? what if you put a bunch of butterflies in the pneumatic tube? So then like <laughs> <laughs> they open it and then like a bunch of butterflies fly out, mm. and then you could say some like like then you could have a note in there that says like we are all one. <laughs> or. You put some caterpillars, caterpillars into, into the tube, the tube and, and shoot, and it, shoot over it over there really, there really slowly. And by, and the, by time the time it gets, it gets over there, there they're butterflies. They're butterflies. I don't think, I don't you, think have you have the option, option to control, control, control the speed of the new number two. You no, know, um, that, that wasn't in the, the assumptions we started with. If you plan in advance, you know, you could take over, the, you could hack into the system, right? Or you could just control time. Well, the caterpillars wouldn't have anything to eat. I mean, they need something to eat. Well, you would stuff a lot of leaves in there as well. You would stuff a lot of leaves in <laughs> and a few caterpillars. What if you if you had, like, a very long penis? Uh-huh. Go on. Go on. <laughs> That's as far as I, as far as I got. I it, would, it would be pretty I great. Feel, I feel like there's got to be something you could do. I don't know. Maybe you could... Maybe you could break the window with your penis. I guess it depends on if you, if you were sexually aroused so, at the time. Obviously you are. Who isn't sexually aroused by pneumatic tubes? Every time I go to the bank, you know? What if you put, like, a sandwich in there? And then you were just like, hey, you seemed hungry. Well, I think it depends on what kind of sandwich. A sloppy joe or... An angry bees sandwich. No, oh, Chris, that's not a real sandwich. Like a truth sandwich? John, that's not a real sandwich either. <laughs> yeah, come on. That's ridiculous. Jeremy and I are the only people taking this topic seriously. Okay, what about what about a financial sandwich? 
Like, okay, so, like, let's say you're making a deposit, right? Right. And you put in, like, some cash and it, and some checks, right? But you put, like, you arrange the cash. So you arrange the, the cash so it surrounds the check, right? So It it's makes like it a, a sandwich. You know, it's like a financial sandwich, you know? With, with sesame seeds. Okay, I was going to say that would not be inappropriate. I mean, the sesame, it, sesame seeds make it inappropriate. <laughs> sesame seeds pu- definitely push it over the You edge. know, yeah, I mean, it really depends on what kind of what kind of spread you put on there. You know, I mean, if it's, oh, like, a, like, if some... it's like a mayonnaise or like a... What if you, like, what if you, like, shove a giraffe up there? What if you shove a giraffe because it has, like, a long neck and its neck would, like, fit all through the tube and then, like, they open the thing and then it's like, there's a giraffe going like... Aah! <laughs> goes like <laughs> I mean okay what if oh wait no what if you filled it with with beans like refried beans that would be inappropriate right? that would not be appropriate <laughs> that would be inappropriate. no okay here what about this you fill it you fill it with be you okay you go up you're like I want to make a deposit they're like all right and then you put, fill it with beans and you send it over and they're like um <laughs> This is this is just like a bunch of beans spill out, and they and, they're, and then they're like, "Excuse me, th- uh, <laughs> this is just a bunch of beans." And then you say, "Like, no, those are those are magic beans. <laughs> those are magic beans, <laughs> and I want to deposit them." And then and then they sh- and then they, the bank shoots you with a gun. Yep, because that's a good ending. That'd be inappropriate. What if you like? You say like I'm holding up this bank, and you put your gun in the in the thing yeah. and send it over. <laughs> you don't <laughs> shoot it in <laughs> oh, the you thing. You the... you place your gun in the tube. And you send the gun over there. And send your gun over there, like so they know you mean business. Like 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 you write a note, and your note says like I I'm holding up this bank. I have a gun. Give me some money. And then you put that note and the gun into the thing. And you send that over, like. <laughs> okay, so tell me that thing again about the about the the gun, Jeremy. So you like put your gun, you you you, you go to the bank and you and you write a <laughs> note that says like, okay, motherfucker, I'm I'm holding up this bank and I want you to give me all your your money uh-huh. with the. And then you put that note in the tube with the gun. And you also. <laughs> With the gun, so they know that you mean business, and then you send your your gun over with the note. I like that. And then you're like, I'm gonna shoot you with this gun. What if if the note, instead of saying that you're holding up the bank, you put the gun in there, and the note says, I've been having trouble in my marriage, and I've been thinking of killing myself. Can you hold on to this for me for a while? <laughs> <laughs> that would be so inappropriate. <laughs> what if you, okay, you put your wife in the, th- the pneumatic tube with a note, and then you send it over, and the note says, Take my wife, please. That doesn't make any sense. All right. <laughs> Here are a couple things, a couple things I was thinking. You could take the capsule and, you know, mm-hmm. open it up. If, what if, if you put AIDS in the capsule? <laughs> Wait, Band-Aid? The disease I mean, AIDS. Or, or like, you know, like... Like the disease AIDS. Segment four. Who said that? Shut up. This is my segment. It's a it's a game. This is for everyone to participate. It's going to be quick and punchy because I'm tired of podcasting. Okay. Everyone's participating. All right. The game is who said that? Just listen to the listen to the quote. I'm going to read you a quote. You have to tell me who said it. Your choices are Mr. Ed, the talking horse from the Mr. Ed television series. Or Don, the talking horse from the movie Hot to Trot. Or Francis, the talking mule from the Francis the Mule movie series. Or Kit, the talking car from the Knight Rider television series. Or 
<laughs> 19th century Danish philosopher and father of existentialism, Soren Kierkegaard. <laughs> right? So, Mr. Ed, Don, Francis, Kit, or Soren Kierkegaard. Your choices are Mr. Ed, Don the horse, Francis the mule, Kit the car, or Soren Kierkegaard the proto-existentialist. Number one. One-way street? Oh, well, that's okay. I'm only going one way. Okay, that's obviously Kit. Mr. Ed! Kit. No, wait. Well, that, I'm not sh Okay, I think that's actually... I think that's... I think that's the horse... The, the horse from Hot to Trot. Okay, Danny says Mr. Ed, Jeremy says Don the horse, and John it's, says it's the Kit. The car from, from Knight Rider. I mean, I could see I could see Kierkegaard saying that. Danny is correct. It was Mr. Ed. What, really? Are you serious? Yeah, nice work, Danny. Yeah, it was Mr. Ed. It was from the episode Ed the Chauffeur, season four, episode 22, aired in 1964. Are you fucking serious? Okay, number two. Most men pursue pleasure with such breathless haste that they hurry past it. I'm gonna say... What are the options? Your options are Mr. Ed, Don the horse, Francis the talking mule, Kit the car from Knight Rider, and Soren Kierkegaard. Okay, guys, let's get serious. I think that Kierkegaard is the obvious choice, but it yeah, could, could be, be a, a ringer. Could be a, a red ringer. Uh, but I think we should... Kierkegaard is correct! Yeah! Okay, we hadn't decided yet. I know, I had to hurry this on. That's from Either Or, which was published in 1843. Number three. Oh. Hey, 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 hey! You guys can't come in here. What do you think this is? Noah's Ark? All right, Don the talking horse. Okay, I'm gonna say Mr. Ed. Mm, I'm gonna Damn, say Danny Kit. is on fire. That was Don the talk, Don the horse from Hot to Trot. It's because I heard it in the John Candy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's literally watching that movie right now. Usually, yeah. Number four. Oh, huh. If that ain't just wacky, my boy Donald has finally discovered S-E-X. Hot Mr. Ed. Uh, I'm gonna go with <laughs> Kierkegaard. <laughs> no, I'm gonna go with the Hot to Trot horse. The Hot to Trot horse. <laughs> All answers are wrong. That was Francis the Talking Mule. From the 1954 movie, Francis Joins the Wax. God damn it. Number five. And how do you think I feel talking to a lawyer? Mr. Ed. Mr. Ed. John the Talking Mule. I'm afraid it was Francis <laughs> the Talking Mule from some clip on YouTube. Uh, uh, number six. I am not okay. I am being held captive inside a television set. Kierkegaard. Kierkegaard. Dumb. That sounds like Mr. Ed. Obviously Kierkegaard. It was Kit, the car from Knight Rider. From the episode Knight Rider oh, Soul it. Survivor, Season 2, Episode 9, aired 1983. Only two more. Number seven. <laughs> I mean, we are, all of us, growing volcanoes that approach the hour of their eruption. But how near or distant that is, nobody knows. Not even God. That's definitely Kierkegaard. He was, he was like all into God and shit, right? Yeah, I'm gonna go with Kierkegaard. He loved volcanoes. Wait, what? I think that it's like supposed to be another trick question, but it's not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's a trick question. I think it's Nietzsche. Oh my God. You, John, it, you are correct. It was a trick question that was actu actually Friedrich Nietzsche from The Gay Science. <laughs> The fuck? fuck me. I'm raising, I'm raising the roof right now. Damn. Did I call that shit? But you called that. Final question. Number eight. Hello, I'm Mr. Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Kierkegaard. 
I'm going to go with Kit. I'm going to go with Mr. Ed. It was Mr. Ed oh. from every episode of Mr. Ed. Yes. Ben. Ben. Party. <laughs> I heard you're looking for the rooster. Don't you know that I'm the rooster? Goddamn right now I'm the rooster. I ain't gonna die. No, no. Hold on. Hold on. Is somebody is somebody on the podcast? I don't want to point fingers here, but is is are one of you guys currently urinating aggressively? No. <laughs> All right. I'm pouring tankering gin. <laughs> yeah, I'm the rooster. Yeah, I'm the rooster. We all look, we all agree exactly that other podcasts are dumb. Yeah, yeah, true. I'm the rooster. I ain't gonna die. One time, one time. It's funny because a rooster is an animal. Like, yeah. You haven't been one time. Yeah. I'm the rooster. And I like When I go out, they call me the rooster. It's like they don't have a you can Ask really anyone around like here, they'll tell you I'm the rooster. I like reached into my my car and I was like, oh shit, it's those giant one of the funniest. I was like, oh, no, that's not right. Initially, I thought it was just the rapper. Then I reached in and was like, oh my god, there's like two whole giant sweet sweethearts left that I haven't even eaten. These must be like totally stale, but they were exactly the same. It was ridiculous. Hey now, oh, I'm the rooster. Anyway. Like okay, like ball game anymore. You know they call me the rooster. All the girls know I'm the rooster. I ain't gonna die. Oh no. It ain't easy being the rooster. Lots of pressure being the rooster. I guess I'll always be your rooster till the day I die.